going to do. Okay. So back to this, then, and I'll just take a few minutes to show you what I mean. Here's some facts about the book of Acts. And see, I'm not going to test you. It's right here for you. Who wrote, who wrote the book of Acts? Who wrote it? Who wrote that book? Somebody say it really loud. You can't talk loud for me because I'm old. Who? Luke. Luke wrote the book of Acts. Luke. What other book did Luke write? What other book did Luke write? Pastor Cheryl. The book of Luke. The book of Luke. <laughs> okay. One of the Gospels. You know the four Gospels, don't you? Let's name them together. Matthew, Matthew Mark, 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 Luke, and John. Right? So that same Luke, the third Gospel, that's the, that same Luke, wrote the book of Acts. And who did he write it to? Who did he write the book to? It, it was a letter. Do you ever write letters to someone? Well, yeah. Luke was writing a letter to somebody. Who was he writing a letter to? Come on, teachers. So Luke was writing a letter to his dear friend Theophilus. And really, the book of Luke and the book of uh, Acts just flows right together. Did you know that? Now I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Are you beginning to understand how important it is to understand the context of a book? Aren't you, does, it, does it make you happy? To already understand that this was a letter, and Luke wrote the letter, and he was writing to a dear friend, and he wanted to tell his dear friend everything that he had learned from the beginning when he when Jesus was walking the earth until later when Jesus ascended to heaven and Luke then continued to work with the, the apostle Paul and some with the apostle Peter do you, do you understand now you're beginning to get a feel of what the book is about do you are you beginning to get an understanding of how important it is that even your little children understand this? Isn't it wonderful? Am I the only one that thinks this is wonderful? Me and Pastor John, we think this book is wonderful, don't we? <laughs> I want you to think it's wonderful. Pastors, teachers, your, your children need to understand these simple facts. The other thing it says up there in that facts, sometimes the book of Acts is called Acts of the Apostles or Acts of the Holy Spirit. Now why is it called those two names? Because that's what the whole book is about. Jesus had ascended from, from earth to heaven. And now the church begins to do its work. Now the apostles, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, become mighty in God. And this book is showing what they've done. But more importantly than that, it's showing the Holy Spirit. Because we know in the book of Acts, what we learn is now the Holy Spirit lives within me. 
Now the Holy Spirit lives within you. And he's going to work through you. He's going to work through your hands. The Holy Spirit is going to work through your tongue. Do you understand? Okay, I need to hurry on. The themes, what is the book about? And I've listed several things. There are 10 things there that the book is about. It's about the beginning of the Christian church. Before we get to the book of Acts, there wasn't a church. That's right. There were synagogues for the Jewish leaders. Our Jews. But now we have a church. And that church starts in the book of Acts. The, the first church. Some of you have the themes in that one book. It's the growth of the worldwide Christian community. In the book of Acts, we see the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ spread across the known world. For the very first time, and we watch the apostles carry that good news. What are some of the other things that happen in the book of Acts? For the first time, we see the power of prayer. Wow. I don't know if you understand or not. But in all the Old Testament, there is very little said about prayer. And there's especially less said about the power of prayer. But all of a sudden we get into the book of Acts. And those apostles have learned how to pray. So the whole book of Acts is full of prayer and miracles. Miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Emily, this is great, isn't it? This, I mean, to understand that that's what book our teachers are going to be teaching. I begin to understand what context means. Teaching with understanding. It's teaching with understanding. See? Some of the other subjects in that book. Some of the other things that are taught in the book of Acts. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The tongues that come as an evidence of the Holy Spirit. That's where we first see that, you see. We see the acts of, of how the Holy Spirit works in every person that is willing to let him work. We see that in the book of Acts. For the very first time ever, we see ministry and, in, and inclusion, including ministry to Gentiles. Gentiles. How many Gentiles do we have in the room today? Raise your hand if you're a Gentile. Come on, raise your hand if you're a Gentile. Guys, you're going to be teaching this. You're going to be hearing the word Gentile. You see how important it is to study these books? Okay, I want to tell you this right now. As, as far as I know, Every one of you should have your hand up. You're a Gentile. Yes. yes. You're a Gentile. Now, you know why you're a Gentile? Why? Because we're not Jews. Are any of you Jewish people? Are you a Jew? Not Jews, no. So are you a Gentile? Yes. Now, I'm only emphasizing that. So it's important so that you see how important it is 
to study the context of a book you are teaching. How many of you are Gentiles? <laughs> All of you are Gentiles. And so when we're talking about the book of Acts, we are talking about ministry to us. For the very first time in world history. Oh, I hope that excites you. <laughs> Other things that are focused in the book of Acts is persecution to the church. Persecution to the church. We see the establishment of biblical truths over cultural issues. Oh, this is important. See, your, your students, little ones, need to learn these things. A biblical truth is above a cultural value. A biblical truth comes first. Tell me, Nambie. give me an example Nambie. of a cultural value. Ya that means it's not necessarily biblical. Circumcision. Circumcision, circumcision of women. <laughs> circumcision of men even at this point is a cultural value. I wrote some more down for myself so I can share with you. Oh, foods. What foods can I eat? What foods can I not eat? See, we begin to see in the book of Acts the difference between culture and Bible truth. That could be a whole lesson in itself, couldn't it? <laughs> but I have to go on. I have to move on here. And then the other thing that I have on your list. Oh, this is, this is wonderful. And that's sermons. Several sermons. Ser messages, sermons. What do we mean? Oh, What? Marubiri. Somebody help me here. <laughs> okay, okay, you say it again. I don't know what you said. Okay, so in the book of Acts, are several sermons that are establishing the church. And I listed them for you right there, just so that you could see them. Okay, there's a major ser uh, 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 sermon in chapter 1 by, by the Apostle Peter. In chapter 7 by our brother Stephen. In chapter 15, by our brother James. And look at those chapters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine sermons by the Apostle Paul. All of those are in the book of Acts. <laughs> I'm, I didn't list the... Uh, uh, Mm. No, it's not even in First or Second Peter. It's not. I mean, it's not in First or Second Peter. That, those are epistles. Those are letters. I'm talking about the Book of Acts. 